Buy American, hire American. It is the simple way that U.S. President Donald Trump has framed his economic platform. But as the new administration gears up for its second week in office, the world is waiting to find out exactly what that pledge means and how it will affect not only Americans, but other industries as well, or other countries as well. So joining us to shed some light on this is international trade lawyer, Mark Warner. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so buy American, hire American. It sounds great when you're looking at make America great again, but is it actually great for American consumers? What's, what's going to happen is prices are going to go up to American consumers if he goes through with it. I mean, on one level, it's, it's a buy American itself is probably a policy that will apply to large infrastructure like steel for his trillion dollar infrastructure program. But to the extent he, we've seen the naming and the shaming of companies in the consumer products or the auto sphere, if they really have to bring their production home to the United States, that means they're not going to be able to source products in Mexico or Asia. That means the prices are going to go up. Um, it may not mean that he'll get what he really wants, which is jobs in the United States, because a lot of manufacturing that might come back might come back with automation as an attempt to keep prices down. Well, I want to touch on something you just mentioned, and this is that idea of Donald Trump uh, calling out, sometimes public shaming, or congratulating uh, big U.S. companies, even before we sit down to sort of look for some of the loopholes in the Buy American Act, which has existed for 80 years in the U.S. Well, they've had Buy American. There are all sorts of international rules that, that uh, are supposed to prevent it. We're part of those as well. But this, is a, this, this naming and shaming stuff is just on the outside of the law, because it's not quite telling you what you have to do. Like we saw it seen with General Motors. Before he was president, and while he was waiting, you know, when he was president-elect, it seemed to have some effect on Ford or GM to bring some of the production home. Not clear whether all of that was, 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 was uh, destined to come home before that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think what we're seeing in response to yeah, the weekend's activities on the immigration file is the companies are becoming louder and more willing to take him on. Amazon and Expedia have actually joined in litigation in, in uh, Washington state. Um, against that immigration policy. And I, I think over time, we're going to see companies begin to resist a little bit more. The United yeah. States is a very litigious society. Well, and it's interesting to note, you know, somebody brought this up in, in business yesterday, is what exactly, their people are looking at the semantics of what does it mean to buy American? Does that mean an American company? Does that mean a foreign company with American workers? What, what, what does that fall Well, we don't under? really know. I think normally he thinks, I think Donald Trump is in a, living in a world in the 50s where products are made in one country. Like, if you think of a car, a car, there's so many parts that go into a car that are made everywhere. You know, a car, I think some estimates just say that various parts can cross the border seven times or more. So I think he's going to find it's very hard to find, uh, bring back all production to the United States without dramatically increasing costs. Um, if he tries to tax imports, as one proposal is there, that means consumers are going to pay mm -hmm. for, for the increased prices, and they'll, eventually we're going to rebel. So again, this just brings me to that point about consumers. It sounds really good. It sounds very patriotic. But, you know, uh, Americans are used to buying goods at, at cheaper prices. Canadians cross the border to buy those right. goods at cheaper prices because, you know, in countries like China, the minimum wage is two ninety an hour, and in the U.S. it can be upwards of 10 Right. Now, I think what we, ha we in Canada have, 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 more, have to be careful with this is that we have buy Canadian programs too, although we don't tend to trumpet them. The Americans look at us and they look at Hydro-Quebec, they look at Infrastructure Ontario on large products, and they say, we want to bid on those too. So the difficulty for us is going to be uh, saying, um, opposing American by American in its formal sense and also in its uh, more narrow sense. Um, without having to see some of our practices attacked as well. Uh, finally, Mark, you bring up a really interesting point about the real threat to American jobs is not companies exporting, it's automation. I think that's right, and I think that's what you're going to find. If any attempt to sort of bring the products, bring the jobs home, bring the manufacturing home, in order to try to keep the costs down and not go up to consumers and not have consumers rebel, is going to see more manufactured products, more automation. I saw something interesting when I think it was uh, Under Armour came out with something yesterday. They're, made, they're bringing back some production of underwear, you know, uh, which I don't think underwear has been made in the United States for a long time, apparently. Uh, but they're using a lot of automation, a lot of computerized stuff that will take measurements of people. And I think that's what you're going to see. I didn't see in the article I read yesterday a lot of mention of how many jobs are coming back. All right. This is a story, definitely, as you said, it hasn't really been laid out uh, in a fulsome sense yet. But as it continues to unfold and we get a better sense of this plan, we're going to have you back, Mark. Thank you. Thanks so much.